about the internet of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. It's kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days. Just this market happens to be a $10 trillion market. We are at a historic turning point. Said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. Moving the whole revolution forward. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world. RP. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Tour Power Script. Let's get right into today's doubleheader. JP Morgan went right after Ripple because they wanted to be the industry leaders in what Ripple's trying to do. And that's cross border payments and, in general, build their own system where they could sell their software. Okay, folks, take a look at what we're going to go over today. I believe that there were some closed door meetings that took place between Brad Garlinghouse and Jamie Dimon, and it didn't go well. Why do I say that? Take a listen to this. So back on December 11th, JP Morgan breaks new ground using in-house blockchain technology and JPM coin to complete a live intra repo transaction. And when we go on to their website, into their newsroom and go to 2020, as you could see, that article has since been taken down. You can only retrieve it on web archives, and which we did. This is it right here, December 10th, JP Morgan executes intra repo transactions using blockchain. We're gonna get into it. But first, what happened 12 days after this? Well, the SEC came and hammered Ripple for conducting $1.3 billion in unregistered securities offerings. JP Morgan has been funding the SEC since inception and their fraudulent activities. And this is a known fact. Nobody could disagree to this. Just going off a few here. Back in 2021, JP Morgan admits to widespread record keeping failures and agrees to pay 125 million penalty to resolve SEC charges. JP Morgan Chase agrees to pay 200 million and admits wrongdoing to settle SEC charges. Crybabies. JP Morgan to pay 267 million for disclosure failures. JP Morgan to pay 264 million to resolve China hiring probe. Folks, do you see this? The SEC gets paid from JP Morgan. And and just just these alone is over a billion dollars and if JP Morgan is trying to come up with a software where we're gonna get into a video by Brad Garlinghouse uh, which you guys have probably heard but you guys need to hear it again because it goes hand in hand with today's video then I wouldn't be surprised if JP Morgan slipped another maybe two billion because it's nothing to them to go after Ripple while they try to invent something which it's not gonna happen because Ripple is way ahead of the game take a listen to this Using blockchain enables borrowers and lenders to execute shorter term intraday repo transactions and goes on to say how it's real time, the transaction uh, settlements, creating new paves to access intraday liquidity. Both collateral and cash legs of the repo transaction were settled using blockchain with the cash leg leveraging JPM coin. And you guys know Ripple has the line of credit, fund instant cross-border payments with a line of credit from RippleNet. And this feature could be applied to, you know, for even repo markets. Um, we're gonna get into the video in a second. Take a listen to what Brad says here. It's hilarious. The offering will be made available to production to external counterparties in the US, some which have already simulated transactions on the new application. And Ripple is Mr. Worldwide, so we got JP Morgan trying to invent something in the United States and let alone if JP Morgan goes to Russia, you think Russia wants to use their technology? Absolutely not. Okay. But take a listen to what Brad Garlinghouse says here. US and the JP Morgan coin made headlines in the fintech space a number of weeks ago. Um, is that similar to traditional cryptocurrency? Because to me, it doesn't sound like a decentralized product, even though cryptocurrency promotes decentralization. So what are the differences with what we traditionally consider crypto? Well, let me start by saying I think it's great for the blockchain and crypto industry to have players like JPM leaning in. Thumbs up. Yep. That's great. Uh, that's the only nice thing I'm going to say about this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So the, the next, I got asked this last week. I was speaking at a Morgan Stanley conference, and somebody asked me, you know, there was this headline set of, set of headlines about, you know, what, about the JPM coin. Right. And I, this guy was from Morgan Stanley who was interviewing me. I said, so is Morgan Stanley going to use the JPM coin? And he's like, well, like, probably not, you know. And so, well, is Citi going to use the JPM coin? Is B of A going to use the JPM coin? Is PNC? And the answer is no. And so does that mean we're all going to have these different coins? And does that mean, like, we're back to where we are, where there's right. lack of interoperability? So, like, what? I don't get it. One more quick thing on JPM coin. So let's think about this. The JPM coin, they announced for institutional customers, if you give them a dollar in deposits, they'll give you a JPM coin that you then can move within the JPM ledger. Wait a minute, just use the dollar. Right. Well, I, don't, like, I really don't understand. Like, if you're just moving it within the JPM ledger and it has to be dollar to dollar, you know, a one-to-one -one backing, it honestly doesn't actually, I don't understand what problem that solves. Now, back to my first answer, look, if it solves the problem of JPM being associated as they're leaning into crypto, yay. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't surprise me if Jamie Dimon got butt hurt and ran to the SEC and built a case and handed them a couple of billions of dollars because it's nothing, because they launder billions and billions of dollars every year, and that's a fact. Don't even let me, don't get me started with the cargo ships. And on average, folks, just to give you guys a rough number for the repo market. What? It's about 2 trillion to 4 trillion repurchase agreements, collateralized short-term loans are traded each day. And now getting on to what JP Morgan created back in 2015 on X, okay, this is crazy. This is what uh, J Jamie Dimon said. Onyx is the forefront of a major shift in the financial services industry. This new business unit reflects JP Morgan's commitment to innovation as we continue to build cutting edge technology that delivers a better, faster, and more inclusive financial system. What are they trying to do here? They're trying to mirror off exactly what Ripple is doing, but folks, we are way ahead of the game, way ahead of the game, and that is a fact. And they also went on to say, we were the first global bank to create a production grade, scalable peer-to-peer -peer blockchain based network, formerly interbank information network, known link by JP Morgan. These guys are waste. I can't, I can't, I can't even believe I'm reading this. Um, so that should give you a rough idea of exactly how and what could be going on behind the scenes because we know this Ripple SEC case is complete show. And then JP Morgan comes out with this PDF a year and a half ago, unlocking 120 billion value in cross-border payments. And they go ahead and refer to Ripple, but again, with some negative comments. Ripple, cross-border payment infrastructure, intended to use cryptocurrency XRP as a settlement in instrument. But take a listen to this, this is a joke. Like High volatility of XRP leading to limited willingness from banks in using it to facilitate payments. Talk about FUD. Relatively high costs owing to spreads between fiat and XRP. They took the worst two things you could say about Ripple and XRP. And they put this in this PDF, folks. You can't even make that up. We know that is false information. That is all FUD that they're putting in this PDF. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I do appreciate every single one of you guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and we'll be back with another episode. We started building RippleNet with the thesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat-based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch. I think what we're building has, you know, it's solving a real problem. And I think all of the tokens, my advice to anybody would be understand the utility. If there's real utility and there's real value being delivered to a real customer, there will be value in the token.